current treatment landscape for polycythemia vera is somewhat complex. Um, and the reason for that is that there has been for over 70 years, a heated debate out to the best treatment for this disease. And there are those like William Damaschek who felt that phlebotomy was the uh, principal treatment. And those like the polycythemia virus study group who thought chemotherapy um, was better than phlebotomy. Uh, as it turns out, um, when polycythemia peer patients are first diagnosed, uh, they have probably uh, between 600 and 1500 um, ml of blood, excess blood in their vascular system. And uh, since the major morbidity uh, in this chronic illness is uh, thrombosis, both arterial and venous, uh, the first treatment need is to reduce blood viscosity and also um, remove nitric oxide scavenging by red blood cells. And as soon as that is done, I believe we've lowered the thrombotic risk uh, to that of the general population. And that can be maintained by periodic phlebotomies to a sex-specific hematocrit. There is a trend in the literature to forget that women with polycythemia vera are not small men. They have smaller blood volumes because they don't manufacture the same amount of androgens as men do. Now, there is on the horizon um, some interesting uh, experimental work um, using um, hepcidin analogs to block iron absorption in polycythemia vera. And um, this is a way possibly to get around maintenance phlebotomy, but it can't, as far as I can see, um, change the hyperviscosity situation when patients are diagnosed. Now, the um, other side of the coin here is that in polycythemia vera, plasma volumes expanded. So the rules for hematocrit uh, targets go out the window until you have uh, re reduced blood viscosity. And then you keep men under 45% uh, hematocrit and women under 42% or even lower. And this is a big mistake um, if you don't adhere to this, particularly in patients who have hepatic vein thrombosis, usually women, who may need to be phlebotomized down as low as 35%. And this is true in pregnant women. Now, thereafter, the question is, well, what about the high platelet count and what about the high leukocyte count? Well, a recent study uh, importantly showed that leukocytes are not responsible for thrombosis in polycythemia vera, and platelets are not responsible for thrombosis in polycythemia vera. Um, the platelets may be sticky in patients with ocular migraine or um, erythromyalgia, and their um, aspirin, usually asp inhibitors uh, other than aspirin or aspirin, tend to be very effective with phlebotomy. Um, with respect to the leukocytes, um, unless patients have hyperuricemia or unless the white count is going over 30,000 and there's increasing splenomegaly, there's no uh, need for phlebotomy because these cells do not promote thrombosis. The other issue uh, that phlebotomy cannot uh, correct is splenomegaly. And this, I want to emphasize that only a small fraction of patients, some um, 15 or less than 15% of polycythemia vera patients are going to um, get big spleens. And I think here, um, there are two ways to treat the patient. One is to use a uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitor, such as uh, ruxolitamid or fetratinib. And the other is to use a recombinant uh, pegylated interferon. Uh, the former only kills off the dividing cells and so will normalize blood counts and shrink spleens, but not in everybody. And the latter, the interferon targets the hematopoietic stem cell that's involved in polycythemia vera, and you can actually uh, produce remissions in many people 
or uh, there's an effect called the CML effect. Patients with CML who are given uh, interferon before they received imatinib went into remissions faster and more durable remissions when they were treated with interferon before imatinib. And I to say this is only a clinical feeling from patients that I treat, that even if you don't get a complete remission, uh, having seen interferon, um, patients tend to have uh, less aggressive disease. But what's an unmet need here are the uh, group of patients who need interferon but don't get the benefit of the drug for reasons that we don't understand, and it may be when to start interferon. As for chemotherapy, I look at that as sort of uh, an emergency use to lower blood counts when they needed to be lower quickly, perhaps for surgery or for uh, symptomatic reasons uh, when interferon does not work. But there's no question that we need newer treatments in polycythemia vera that do not involve um, chemotherapy and are more efficacious than uh, recombinant interferon.